Hey guys, so it is my last week, actually last few days, as a first year resident. So I'm really excited. Next year, or I'm working like two more nights and then I will be officially a second year resident. Super excited about that, but I just checked my schedule and with, with power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Basically, I have more patient load, like I have to see more patients in a shorter amount of time. And I know a lot of you guys are, say that, you know, they hate how doctors push you out and they feel like they don't get enough time with their physician, but it's not the case. Like I went into medicine so I can develop that relationship and build bond with people, but it's hard when administration only gives you 15, 20, 30 minutes to spend with your patient. Half of that time you're being checked in. And if you think about it this way, you know, the person who is scheduled right after you, you're taking up their time if you go over and I don't know, it's, it's a poorly, poorly constructed system, but we're stuck here. Anyways, um, I'm still on nights now. I want to just take you through my night and we'll talk about random things that come into my mind. I've been thinking a lot about school loans lately, thinking about how to pay them off and what I'm doing currently. So yeah, keep watching if you want to hear me talk about that. Hey guys, I just got my first admin. It is currently 9.40. I'm going to show you guys how long it actually takes to say, see the patient, write the note and everything. Yeah. I put it in the PRN order, so um, try that first. Thanks. Oh, woohoo! <laughs> no problem. Bye. All right, so it's currently 10 o'clock. I just finished up seeing the patient so that took around 20 minutes to do my history physical and exam and now I had to go back and put in all the orders write my notes usually that takes around an hour and in between that patients call or not patients but the nurses call me for orders um, from downstairs and stuff so yeah I'm just gonna do this and I'll check in back with you guys in a little bit So it's currently 10.50. That patient was not as complicated, so I got the note done a little faster. But yeah, that's generally how long it takes, an hour, an hour and a half, sometimes even two hours if the patient's really complicated to finish the whole note. So now I'm just going to work on my morning report, and after I finish that, I can talk to you guys about loans and repaying back loans because my friend has been texting me about it tonight too. So. Hey guys, so it's currently 2 o'clock in the morning. I got super busy, um, but I just wanted to come here and talk to you guys about loan repayment because I feel like around this time it's always a hot topic. Um, my friend actually just texted me about it earlier in the evening. And so I made a video in the past, I'll link it in the description box or here, um, but basically talking about the different loan repayment programs. And at that time, I told you guys I was in 300,021, basically 100 in debt. So as of last that I checked, my outstanding balance is $335,243.12. And that's an insane amount for anyone to pay back. But a lot of you guys have asked, like, how do you pay that back when you're in residency and you're making like pennies on the dollar? What I'm in right now is called uh, income-based loan repayment program, where they based how much you pay on how much you make. So when I was in med school, I worked as a recitation leader and basically I made no money and so my first whole year of residency I paid zero dollars and so 
because I paid zero dollars, there's continued interest and because I couldn't pay that interest, there's the added sum to the principal as well. So that means that I'm basically just getting, basically that pile of money is basically growing that I need to pay back. Uh, so the goal for me is to pay that off in five years. I don't know how. Um, and a lot of you guys are saying, oh yeah, go check out David Ramsey, like blah, blah, blah. I've watched some of his videos and he's just like, he's telling me things that I already know. Like, obviously don't live outside of your means. Obviously don't spend money that you have. Obviously budget, you know, like he's not telling me anything that I don't already know. Like, yeah, no shit, don't spend so much money. Yeah, no shit, pay back the money that you borrowed no shit like I feel like there's there has to be a better way than just putting your head down and working your ass off and you know like my view is that I'm not willing to eat rice and beans for years like say five six years just so I can pay off this loan because I don't want to die say tomorrow and be like, man, I didn't do anything with myself because I was too busy paying back these loans. Like I never enjoyed life. I didn't do anything that made me happy because I was paying back these loans. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> What's your approach on this? What is your approach on taking out school loans or paying it back? Because I feel, I honestly feel like it's worth it. I'm investing in myself, $300,000 in myself. Um, for a dream and a life that I wanted, like, yeah, I'll do it. But someone else might think differently. You know what I mean? So what kind of questions do you have about loan repayment? Because I feel like I did a lot of research on this, so I'd probably be able to answer a lot of your questions. So just comment in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them. But yeah, right now, um, the plan that we have the government pays for 50% of the interest. So the number that I told you guys, my interest is at 6%. So that comes out to be $19,537.92 in interest just for this year. But since I'm on that program, my interest that I have accrued was only nine only nine thousand seven hundred sixty eight dollars and ninety six cents. So yeah, I mean, there's no point in me paying any of the interest right now because the government is gonna pay half of that anyways. I don't have enough money to even touch the principal, so there's no point in paying. Right now, what I'm trying to do is save amount on the side like a lump sum to pay it all when I graduate in in the next three years because they only pay for half of your in your interest in the first three years after that then all the interest you pay but basically after the three years when they stop I plan to do like a huge lump sum to cut a lot of that out and so yeah we'll just see how it goes <laughs> so i actually been fiddling around with this excel sheet putting in how much i've made and then everything we've spent it on as a family um, a lot of you guys ask what does stan do for a living does he just stay home and watch wyatt um luckily he is able to work from home and he's in real estate but that month i think he made close to nine thousand and then i made close to four thousand so in total, we had almost $13,000 in income. And then a lot of that, uh, my car broke down that month, so I had to pay over a thousand. Um, and then what was really surprising to me was we ate out, I think, I forgot where it is in here, but um, we ate out and it was close to like $800. But that's also when I went on vacation and stuff like that. So. I just wanted to do this and do an average of each month so then I can actually set a budget for July. So I went to Instagram 
and I asked you guys if you guys have any questions about student loan debt and a lot of you guys had a lot of questions so I'm going to try to go through it as quick as quickly as possible. A lot of them are repeat questions but if you haven't watched my previous video on my student loan debt I talked about all the different repayment plo blah, blah, blah. I talked about all the repayment programs that are available during residency and after. I also talked about uh, public service loan forgiveness. I talked about um, like the tax bomb and different ways to pay it off. So if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and check there first. Um, so some of the questions that are having now is what kind of savings do I have and how did I pay back school loans in med school? One you take out money during med school to pay for everything. Tuition, cost of living, eating, drinking, blah, 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 all that you take out a loan for. You're not actually working while you're in med school. And hence, that's why your loan debt is so high because you're covering basically everything. Your car payments, your cell phone payments, your internet, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, at the end of it all, the average from 2016 I just checked was around 200000 Since then, the cost of tuition has greatly increased, so I'm thinking the average is around 300000 um, And there's also higher ends of the spectrum and lower ends of the spectrum. But the average, I would say... Oops, sorry. Sorry about that. But anyways, the average is around 300000 And... What I did personally during med school to save was I didn't eat out much. I didn't have internet. I always went to school to study uh, or I used my hotspot on my phone. I didn't have TV or cable or any of that. It's just basic, go home, go to sleep, and that was it. So I cut out a lot of the other expenses. Now that I'm married, I have a new home and all that. I'm starting to budget now. And I told you guys just previously that, you know, I was kind of upset that I used $800 on food, but in reality, it's not that much. We don't really spend anything on anything else. Like that's our way of enjoyment. Um, I don't go shopping. I haven't bought makeup in a long time. So at the end of the day, even though I spent that much and my car broke down and all that stuff, um, my net outflow, or how much I saved was still around um, $5,600. So it's, n I'm not spending crazy money as you guys think. I, Stan and I are big savers. Uh, another question that I got is, do med students get scholarships or residents get scholarships? In med school, there are scholarships, but not as much as when you were in college, like in, med school you actually have to write essays or do something really spectacular or be extraordinary or whatever to get a scholarship that wasn't me i didn't get a scholarship in residency i haven't heard of any scholarships unless you do research um, and that's not even for you i think it's for your research um and it's that's because you're actually working and getting paid so no one's gonna actually i don't think anybody's gonna pay you more um in that regard and then lastly, how did I buy a home when I'm in so much debt? Because for those of you who know, um, people look at your debt to income ratio. Obviously, I'm not making that much money and my debt is ginormous. What happens is that I applied specifically for a physician's loan and they did not count my school loans into that aspect. And so I was able to take out a loan for a home specifically called a physician's loan and um, they didn't even need me to put down a, a down payment but we had the money so we did so yeah I know there's a lot other questions but leave them down in the comment section because this video is gonna be like 30 minutes long <laughs> Wyatt why do you do that Wyatt